Radial Engine Assembly Tutorial Part 2. Please pause and read this slide carefully. It is important that you have these settings in order to go on. At this moment, it would be wise to pause and take note of the dimensions. For the master rod, it is important to create a sort of template as shown. This is to facilitate the creation of the base sketch. The main strategy to create this seemingly complex part is to use the symmetry of the part to your advantage. Here we see how I create only one quarter of the whole master rod. We start by placing what will be eventually the cutouts for the holes that go through the master rod. Simply follow the methodology of how the holes are placed as shown, and then you will see how having the template has allowed us to lock in the distance of 250 millimeters between the two origins of the cutouts quickly and efficiently. Then we create the baseline of the sketch that will be coincident with the horizontal line of the template. This line should be then coincided with the edges of the circles as shown. As you can see, the placing of construction lines is very important for the creation of the master rod. Continue by placing the rounded radius on the right side with another circle. Also, be sure to use the trim command as needed to clean up the sketch as you work. Back on the left, I placed another construction line that has been constrained to the center of the large circle. This is so that I can better place my small circles to either the left or the right as shown. The positioning dimensions of the smaller circles were taken directly from the schematic earlier in this video section. If your dimension line is not horizontal, you can simply right click and choose horizontal before placing the line as shown. Here we see how the outer rounded edges are formed on the left side. This is all done with understanding how to use a circle command to create the rounded arcs. The dimensions are coming straight from the schematic shown earlier. Be sure to delete any automatic constraints that are created when placing your circles. These will keep you from properly constraining these circles. As you can see, continuing to use the methodology of using the circles to create the arcs and constraining them in combination with the trim gives you the exact arc that you need if you have the correct radius already keyed in.
Continue placing the lines in curves and use construction lines as often as you like. They will make the placement of the elements much easier and ensure they will be constrained properly in the correct positions. Here we see how the straight horizontal section comes off the curved section and goes into the rounded arc of the circle. The slant of the line does not need to be constrained because the initial and final height have already been decided and create this angle. Remember to always make sure that your sketch does not break or come apart. Exit Sketcher and pad out the sketch that we just made to 35 millimeters. Select the top face and go into Sketcher. Then select the half circle on the right and the base of the part and project the lines and use them as a guide to creating the distance constraint of the elongated hole, as shown. Now exit Sketcher and cut this section out to the required depth of 32.5 millimeters. Select the interface as shown, go into Sketcher, create a construction line that will be constrained with symmetry on the edges shown. Then create a rectangular profile that will have the dimensions of 14 by 150 millimeters. Be sure to offset this rectangle by 31.5 millimeters, which is the outer ring surface. Now exit Sketcher. Choose the Groove command, select the profile we just made, and cut out the excess section of the master rod. Now reselect the inner surface and recreate the following sketch. The reason we are creating this sketch is so that we can cut out the angled grooved section and remove the excess material on the right side all in one pass. Essentially, we will have the inner profile that you see if you were to look at the part with a section cut.
The combination of using this sketch along with the pocket command is much like carving your part out of wood. Once the profile has been properly constrained to the edges of the master rod quarter part, come out of Sketcher and pocket the section out. Now go back to the inside surface with Sketcher and create the rectangular sketch as shown. The method used is similar to that of creating the rectangular sketch that we used in the groove above. In fact, it's the same steps. Now that we have grooved out the sections, we will select the bottom face of the part as shown and work on creating the profile that will be used to cut out the extra material between the halfway point of the part and the first set of rounded rings shown here. By creating this same sketch and cutting it out with a pocket command, you will have effectively created one quarter of the part. Now the easy part will be mirroring the quarter section as shown so that now you have the top half and then mirroring once again what you have to create the whole section as shown. And just like that, we are complete. Part 3 is Main Assembly. 